Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Oda Potato. This is Crusader Kings 2. And this is a game that I've wanted to play for a long time now, but was never brave enough. Um, I've watched a couple of tutorials. I know roughly what I'm doing, but, um, but I would really love your help. So please comment as much as you possibly can on how badly I am playing and, uh, and let me know. This is not going to be um, a perfectly done playthrough, and you should know right from the get-go that I am not a professional, but I really, really, really want to get down and dirty with the with the brand new DLC that this game has released. That's, of course, the Monks and Mystics DLC, uh, and I want to do a lot of creepy stuff with devil worshipping and all of that. That, to me, uh, is is reason enough to, uh, to try and learn how to play this incredibly complex game. Um, and I'm not going to make it that easy for myself. I suppose... This is an easy country, uh, West Francia. We're not going to be playing as West Francia. We're going to be playing as uh, Scotland the Brave, which is a more difficult country. Um, but it also it also basically means that we we get to be our own dude. You know, we get to be uh, King Owain of Strathclyde, um, which you know is in Scotland and uh, Scotland the Brave and all that. We need to make sure that we are uh, you know turning Scotland into the Scotland that we want to see. So. Um, yeah, we are going to be playing as this dude, Alt Clut. House Alt Clut. I've never heard of it. <laughs> never heard of it at all. But um, the you know Strathclyde, Kingdom of Strathclyde, whatever. Petty King of Strathclyde. I'm going to call it the Kingdom of Strathclyde because you know, fuck you, video game. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be playing as these guys. We are going to be playing with all of this nonsense. I, I don't even know what's going on here. But um. But we are going to be playing with all of the default rules because I have no idea what I am doing. Um, I've read a little bit. I know roughly um, what some of the stuff does. I mean, Monks and Mystics uh, allows, like, devil worshippers, which I'm really interested in. And I want to see how that ends up um, impacting the game. I have no real idea. I've played about half a game, I would say. Um, but... Yeah, I'm always looking for tips and hints and tricks to see uh, what's going on. And one of the issues that I think that you'll probably end up finding uh, with this is that I, I kind of know on a macro level what we're supposed to be doing. You know, we need to be conquering this guy, we got to conquer this guy and conquer this guy, whatever. But on a micro level and the interactions between some of the different elements is where uh, I'm probably going to end up falling down. So you'll you'll need to you'll need to help me out there. Anyway, this is our dude. He looks very attractive. We have uh, we have an heir very cool indeed um and one of the first things that we are probably going to want to uh to try and sort out is we're going to probably try and want to take back uh the you know the petty kingdom of strathclyde because currently i mean it's kind of i don't want to say it is petty but it's kind of pathetic right now like we need to make it uh truly truly glorious and so we are going to try our very best to uh to make that dream a reality and we can force claims or we can force de jure claims on de jure de jure whatever who gives a shit anyway we can force claims on this area i think but i i don't think that that's going to be a possibility for now because we're not quite up to the uh to the might that this chap has this chap is uh much <laughs> much more uh much more advanced than we are uh we are very very minor 462 troops is uh, apparently the largest number of troops that we could possibly raise so that's not uh, that's not going to be a target for a considerable period of time um however However, this guy over here, and you are Petty Kingdom of Dal Rayata. That's an area that I think that we probably are going to start conquering. Um, 420 troops is the maximum that you can possibly raise, so that's 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 great. I'm uh, I'm happy with that. You've got two little people under you. Uh, now, there is the Kingdom of Pictland, and the Kingdom of Pictland is something that I am very 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 interested in uh, in in taking on. You, of course. Are yeah, you're the you're the, you've got the big dick in Scotland at the moment, but believe you me, buddy. One of these days, I'm gonna be the big dick in Scotland. Now, historically, uh, Scotland should I think go down to about this line. So if you look at this line here, I think that that is where the historical what is it I yeah the historical um, difference between what is um, what is uh, 
what is Scotland and what is England uh, differentiates. So we kind of want to get right down to the bottom of Lothian. That's kind of going to be the goal. Uh, we want to try and reform Scotland. But as I say, it's going to be a hell of a long journey and I am horrendously underprepared for, uh, for getting there. So let's try and do the limited amount of things that I can actually do. All right, let's go through the notifications first. We need to try and arrange a marriage. Now, now a marriage is uh, is an interesting one because a marriage will guarantee you, I'm sure you already know this if you're watching this video, a marriage will guarantee you uh, a non-aggression pact, which is, which is kind of nice, but um, the only person that is... The only person that is actually in England, or actually in Scotland, what about you? Are you in Scotland? I don't even know if you are. Mercia, that's in England, right? Yeah, I mean, Francia, I mean, that's kind of cool that we can marry a princess of Francia. Um, but that that is in itself, like, you know, miles away. It's a hell of a long way away, so I'm not really sure if that's someone that would be, uh, would be good to get a, a non-aggression pact with. Now, getting into a relationship with this guy would be kind of interesting, and he actually does not have a wife. Um, so there is a chance that we could, if we married someone off, then we could extend our dynasty and, uh, you know, and, and give him a wife. But unfortunately, we currently only have uh, two sons. No, sorry, we only have one son at the moment. My bad. We only have one son. We don't even have two sons. It's terrible. Um, and our son is only one year old, so he's a little bit... A little bit young for these things. We don't even have a daughter yet that we could uh, potentially marry off and extend our uh, extend our family uh, train with train train chain. That's right. Um. Anyway, let's let's think about a marriage. I'm just gonna make so many so many bad mistakes, and I'm just I'm just I'm just so prepared for it. Um. Kent. I guess I guess we could go with the uh, courtier in Kent. She's got decent stats all round. Um, in terms of what stats we have, we've got Marshall at 17, Diplomacy at 4, so I guess we kind of just want someone that will complement our own stats more than anything else right now. The Courtier in Kent would actually be pretty fucking decent. You're also pretty good, but you're Greek, and I don't really give a shit about Greek people right now. Maybe I'm just playing the game completely wrong. Who knows? Um, but sometimes you just got to grow some big balls and just uh, and just and just make the decision. Uh, the problem with the person from Kent is that she's only a courtier. She's not, you know. You know, she's oh well, daughter of king. Eh, whatever. Let's 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 go for it. Um, arrange marriage. Yep, you're gonna go for it. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't even know where fucking Kent is for God's sake. Where is Kent? Good question. <laughs> no idea. Oh, down, down here. Down here. Okay, so we'd be marrying this guy's daughter, right? So, uh, you have a daughter, presumably, and I think, yeah, we're going to be marrying her. Perfect. All right, so we'll do it. Um, it's perhaps not the best, but whatever. I, I, once again, I am pretty new to this. Pick an ambition. Well, our ambition, Scotland the Brave, is to become the king of Pictland. That's exactly what... I want to do. Um, I don't really know why I should, but um, I kind of want to. I I kind of want to um, become a paragon of, bir of virtue. I'm not really interested in that. I'm more interested in becoming the king of Pickland, and we gain 500 prestige. I'm honestly not interested in. Uh, I'm not interested in anything else. I really just want to become king of uh, of Pickland. Yeah, all right, thank you very much. Uh, let's also choose a focus. So a focus is a good opportunity, as far as I'm aware, to uh, top up one of the skills that you're kind of shit at. Um, now, obviously, Marshall, we kind of, you know, we knock the ball out of the park on that one. Whatever his name is, King Owain II of Strathclyde. Um, we do kind of knock the ball out of the park on the Marshall uh, side of things, which is, which is lovely. Um, but stewardship... 
might be uh, a little bit interesting. I would love to get some more uh, taxes. Taxes are always good. Intrigue uh, for plots and stuff like that. But I'm not that bothered about plots and stuff like that. Not at the moment. I'm not really uh, down to clown with how they work because I'm a bit of an idiot. Uh, diplomacy, I think, maybe is what we want to uh, is what we want to, uh, to to focus on for now. Let's give it a crack. Sure, there we go. So our diplomacy should be perhaps slightly worse. Uh, we can pr we can press claims uh, de jour ducal claims. All right. I mean, that's fine, I guess. But I we can't really can't really go to war against this dude who is, you know literally part of one of the largest empires in England. I say empires, kingdoms, you know what I mean. Um, so instead, we are going to try our, uh, focus our efforts on, on, on this chump over here. Um, now, this is a, a, a you know, a, a mechanic that I'm, I'm still, I'm still getting used to, so, so please bear with me. Um, you guys, uh, we can, at a, at maximum, raise, what was the, 160 from you, but you will currently provide me with zero. Now, I presume if I unpause that, then that will change. But bishops and all of that nonsense is uh, a mechanic that I am interested in. But hey-ho. Uh, we can't call any vassals into war. That's fine. We don't have any fleets. We don't need them. I don't even understand how they work, quite frankly. Uh, so let's let's just go through all of uh, this nonsense that we need to do. So we need to start fabricating claims. That's the first port of action. Uh, this is the bishop, by the way, um, from the bishopric of Strathclyde or whatever the hell it's called. Let's start fabricating a claim on this area, although I think, if I'm not mistaken, we can actually declare war on this guy right now and um, make tributary, but I don't know if that's something that I really want to do. Like, we may be able to get some better... Um, some better CB conditions over you, but I don't know. I have no real idea what's going on. Uh, so let's just let's just set you to fabricate some claims over there for now. Suppress revolt. I'm not really that interested. Uh, training troops. I am absolutely interested in that. And organizing raid. Um, no, <laughs> please. I do do not want to do such a thing. The steward. What can the steward do? Settle tribe to settle a tribe in your country, increasing the chance that his culture will change to Welsh. Oversee construction or build legend. Monthly prestige. Uh, what's our prestige currently at? 30? I guess we'll go for monthly prestige. Not like it really matters that much. Um, what would that do? Eh, I don't know what that does, so I'm just gonna... Just gonna go with it. Uh, the Spy Master. Do we have anything for the Spy Master to do? Plot power increase plus 3.5%. Um, I'm gonna build a spy network over here because I do want to sort of muck around with this guy. So let's build a spy network and see where that goes. I have no real idea if that's going to work out or not. I just just go with the flow. Uh, and you chaps, what do you do? Uh, improve religious relations or build zeal. Monthly piety. Now, the Pope and the papacy are not exactly uh, something that I am particularly familiar with. So I'm just going to leave you on this for now and hope that all of my problems go away. Um, so you, let's dismiss for now. Um, special title actions possible. Set the crown focus. I don't really know. I don't really know if this is going to do a goddamn thing. Sure. There we go. Uh, and special minor titles. We can uh, stick someone as a designated regent. I guess the only person that actually has um, an ounce of power within our uh, region is the Bishop of Cinder and Saint, which is, of course... Cinder and Saint? That's probably that's probably exactly how to not say it. All of these words do not sound Scottish at all. Um, but yeah, this is Cinder and Sant. Cinder Yin. Whatever. It's Welsh culture. It's not it's not even Scottish culture yet. Uh, yeah, so let's get you to be the designated regent. Um, worst comes to worst, you take over. It's not exactly the end of the world, is it? Uh, but that is pretty damned good. Now, I'm pretty certain that this is... A pretty shocking state of affairs for the empire, but I'll be honest, there's not a there's not a goddamn thing that I uh, that I really know how to do, so that's fine. 
Uh, promoting a commander, not really interested. Nope, not really interested in any nobles. Present debutantes. No, not really interested in any of this. I don't need money. Buy indulgence for my sins. No. Now, the societies and, uh, and this whole new religious aspect, monks and mystics, is something that I'm super, super interested in. Um, and Lucifer's Order. Holy cow. Uh, the Hermetic Society, the Dominican Order, and the Benedictine Order. All of these probably have really active... Uh, really active... Have really interesting... Um, elements, and I am probably probably interested in joining one of these societies um, in good time, but we'll have to see what you guys think and uh, and and tell me which path uh, I should go down. Now, I think we're a-okay to just take it uh, to take it off off pause mode. We'll stick it up to speed 2 because I don't want to be uh, stuck around here forever. And let's see how the marriage proposal goes because I'm sure it will go absolutely swimmingly. Uh, and I hope I shall... Perfect. There we go. I hope I shall get married in, in, in good time. We can gain 10 gold or gain 25 prestige. Well, I think we're going to gain prestige, actually. We're actually fine. Well, I say that. Maybe we'll gain the gold, actually. Yeah, let's, you know what? Let's gain the gold. 25 prestige is a hell of a lot of prestige, but let's gain the gold. Uh, to the Great King, fantastic. I'm glad that you are uh, that you are happy with that. So, diplomacy, uh, you're a tributary of someone else, but now you should be, should be saying that you've got a, a, a non-aggression pact with us, which is, which is quite nice. And we shall now get married in, in holy matrimony. All right, so if we were to raise a levy, it would not be very much because, of course, we are pretty pathetic, but we are training troops, and that is an important point, which, which will give us uh, an extra 30%. The question is, where do we go from here, and how much effort is it going to take to uh, squash this guy? Because you do have a, a fair bunch of titles, but I'm presuming that you are not in a position to really do anything with all of this land that you seem to have. And you only seem to have two provinces. That's what's, uh, that's what's screaming out to me. You directly control them both, which is, which is fine. Um, a, a big town over there. And a decently sized town over there as well. Much larger than our one. Much larger than our levy. So our levy is somewhat, um, somewhat pathetic in comparison to his. But, you know, we're going to try our very best uh, in order to in order to train up a decent number of uh, of forces in order to accomplish the goals that we have uh what is this a message arranged uh, of arranged marriage now you are the dude from pickland all right so you are a court chaplain of Pickland. I kind of am interested in setting up uh, a marriage with those guys because I'm not really interested in attacking Pickland, at least for the foreseeable future. And if we can marry off someone, then that might uh, indeed help us. As long as we don't marry off anyone in this guy's um, dynasty, then we're absolutely fine. But for now, I think it's A-OK. -okay. Pickland, Pickland for now, you're good in my books, you're, you know, you're a, you're a good dude, at least for now, but that will invariably change as soon as, uh, as soon as we decide that we want to take you over, which will definitely happen. Um, alright, so we can declare war on this guy right now. We can declare war on this guy right now. Maybe our, um, whatever you call it fortifying, not fortifying, fabricating claims is completely unnecessary because maybe making a tributary is maybe making a tributary is exactly what we want. Remove any previous becomes tributary. Maybe we just go for it actually. Maybe we just go for it. It might upset some people. It might upset some people. Let's just do it. Let's just absolutely do it. Um, do we need to raise our levy manually? Yeah. Now, 
commanders and all of that nonsense? I have no idea how that works. So let's just straight up go and attack. We've got a we've got the numbers advantage, so I'm just gonna say, yeah, this is definitely something that we should be doing right now. But of course, once again, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing, so you know, don't get me wrong. This may be a grave mistake and may may lead to me never uh, conquering uh, Scotland, but you never know. Uh, we might be successful in our endeavor, uh, and therefore, I will be happy. Hey, fantastic! A noble has distinguished himself in this battle. Perhaps I can make use of him? Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Lots and lots of good stuff all around. Now, uh, where are you heading? Are we able to get rid of you? A massive recruitment drive. Awesome! Honestly, a massive recruitment drive works for me. Uh, we are sieging out now, and I have no idea how the siege mechanics in this game work in comparison to uh, to EU4. It looks like that chap is going to uh, is going to regroup. What's what's up with you? You are attacking Scottish Revolt's war for Pickland. Interesting, 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 interesting. So it seems like there are some revolutionaries that are perhaps upsetting. Uh, perhaps upsetting Pickland. Oh, look, it's uh, a trebuchet. Interesting, interesting, interesting indeed. Um, now, it looks like it looks like this chap is still chilling out somewhere uh, over there. Wow, holy shit, this is independent now. No, wait, this is independent. This is controlled by the Scottish Revolts now, apparently, so that entire border just completely changed. Uh, vassal revy, uh, levies raised too long. Is that a problem? Is that a problem? Are you gonna start hating me? Okay, I guess people just start hating me when... Uh, let's send people back to defend our capital, I suppose. Yeah, maybe we should have been a little bit more careful with who can control our capital. I'm not worried about being defeated here. It's certainly, you know, winning is definitely fine, but hey-ho. All right, what is this? Your experience in matters of war has increased, and there are many things that you will do differently in future battles. What will you focus on? Uh, flat terrain experts? What's the terrain over here? Terrain is hills over here and plains. I think, honestly, we need hills. If we can get hills, then that would be, that would be lovely. Light foot leader or the cavalry leader? Oh, God. Well, let's just choose one of those ones that I think will uh, aid us in some way. But I have really no idea what the fuck is going on. All right, so you get absolutely crushed. That's exactly what I would expect. Um, and it looks like Pickland won. Yeah, Pickland is now back in control. The Scottish revolutionaries, the Scottish revolts are uh, are finished. Let's move you up here. The Revy... The, Revies. The levies have been raised too long. I am very aware of that, but I'm presuming that that is just something that you have to deal with. Alright. Can we head over here? Can we just, like, stack wipe them? Is that a thing that, that can happen in CK2 as well? I don't really know. I'm guessing that that's a thing that can happen. You're still retreating, though, so obviously we won't be able to, um, to pick up kills on you, but that would be pretty nice. That would be pretty nice. Uh, our war score is not nearly high enough uh, in order to offer peace. I don't imagine. Well, let me let me see. Enforced demands. Um, obviously, he's not going to go for that right now, so we're just going to have to keep on slogging at it. I do not know the war score that we're actually going to need in order to in order to be successful in our conquest. Okay, let's send you up here. I don't know if stack wiping is a thing. I'd I, I'm guessing maybe if we haven't done it yet, then it's not. But 39% war score. We seem to be getting a shit ton of war score from battles itself. We haven't even started sieging somewhere down. I don't even know if we want to siege somewhere down. Um, sieging down may not be as effective as it is in, uh, in EU4. I don't know why I was paused there. That's my B. Sorry about that. Uh, 12th of November, and we should get to um, wherever the hell this is. Reduce your forces yet further. I guess if we just get involved in a bunch of small battles that, you know, are pretty easy to win, I guess that'll just keep on getting us war score to the point of um, change in war score. Seven change in war score. That's pretty good. Let's get you to move back down here. Uh, you are retreating uh, all the way down over this way. I guess we can head all the way, uh, 
all the way over down there. Let's have a little look. Your opinion of me is... Nope, that's the opinion of the Pope. Uh, so the fact that the vassals... Uh, the vassals... The, uh, the vassals' levies have been raised. That's fine, I think. Like, that's fine. We'll just have to deal with that reality. Um, again, I have no idea how much war score we can actually get from uh, sieging, occupation. That's what it's counted as here. Perhaps we just go for it? I think we actually just go for uh, occupation and see and see if that'll actually give us a decent amount of war score because obviously this is the this is this dude's main uh, main holding. It's the crown focus, which uh, which means I'm presuming it'll be worth more war score if we can uh, if we can get our grubby little paws into it. So we'll give it a crack. We'll see uh, how long sieging takes. I have no idea how long um, it will take to siege this place out. Because I, I, you know, I have no concept of uh, of what sieging actually does. Uh, let's head over. Let's not head over there then. I don't really want to. I don't really want to go over there if I can uh, if I can avoid it. But I'm presuming that this work works on a monthly basis. Is that how it works? Doesn't seem to work on a monthly basis. It works on uh, a twelve day basis. Awesome. Which means that we are actually uh, eating away at their morale even faster than uh, than we usually would be if we were playing EU4, which is which is phenomenal. Uh, an outbreak of disease in the camps outside the walls uh, has killed many of the besiegers. Um, I don't know about many. We're down to 450 troops, which is not exactly... It's not exactly paltry, but it's, uh, it's, it's decent enough, I think. Um, can we split this army in two? Is that a possibility? New unit split in half. That does not seem like a possibility. I think we're just going to have to brave it out and hope that we can defeat uh, defeat this holding or defeat this region in the allotted time scale. You're not even going to siege down my, my capital anyway, or my capital, my only province. You're not going to siege down the only province I have anyway, so in reality, who even gives a shit how long it takes, as long as you don't even decide to bother to, to go over there. Uh, attempt to assault holding, we might take serious losses if we attempt to do so. I'm not really interested in taking unnecessary losses, especially when this is going so damn well anyway. Um, I think, I think, honestly, we can be really, really happy about this, and everyone is gonna be singing my praises as soon as we win this. Now, this will take morale to below zero, and uh, take it from 10% to below that. I'm presuming that on that date, we gain uh, control, which is fantastic. That's really, really good. Uh, now, that only gave us 10%. Uh, war score, which was really interesting, and he still will not accept my enforced peace demands. He will accept a white peace, but obviously I'm not interested in a white peace. If I was interested in a white peace, then I, uh, I, uh, I, I, you know, I wouldn't be here. Let's head into the hills. Uh oh, what is this? Oh god, what does this mean? What's the problem? Commander of Strathclyde. We need a commander of Strathclyde. Is this you? Are you the guy? Commander of Strathclyde? Um, I'm going to try and pretend I know what I'm doing. Sure. That definitely made a difference. So I'm happy that that changed something. Uh, so what do we need in order to what war score do we need in order to make this uh, a successful event because I have no fucking idea Literally no idea. Um, I guess this will be the last assault on this dude's territory We probably will end up taking quite significant losses at this which means I guess maybe our vassal will end up being rather pissed at us But apparently he doesn't even care that the uh, that the levies have been raised so that's great for us that's great for us. Awesome. And I'm not expecting to lose this battle in the slightest. So, once again, great news all around. This is fantastic. This is grand. This is great. All of these numbers, they mean nothing to me. All that all that I'm seeing is victory. And that's 13 war score, which is which is a hell of a lot. Now, here's the question. If we manage to completely siege this guy out, 
Is that going to lead to... Uh-oh. That's a problem, I guess, maybe. I don't give a shit. I mean, pop-ups, you know, man? They just they just don't do it for me. They just don't do it for me. Anyway, uh, let's get this place down, and then we can... I guess that'll probably trigger him into a place where... Um, where we might have a hundred percent war score. I don't really know. I've never, uh, I've never won a war in uh, in CK2 before, uh, but we do look like we're winning it, so that's actually rather nice. But anyway, ladies and gents, on that note, uh, my name of course has been Over the Potato. This has been the first episode of CK2 Monks and Mystics. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.